Visiting a castle is fun. What makes it even more fun? When it is a well-preserved castle nestled in the lovely rolling Cotswold Hills of the Gloucestershire countryside with gorgeous gardens, an amazing amount of English history linked to it, and it's less than 20 minutes from my home. In today's video, I will show you some pretty sights and share with you lots of stories. That's why I'm calling this video, Sudley Castle Stories. I'm so excited to be here at Sudley Castle today, not just because it is a giant castle that is so opulent, so beautiful, and not just because it is a very historic castle with so much interesting history behind it, but also because it's the castle closest to my home in Cheltenham. As we approached the entrance gate to the Sudley grounds, I saw this beautiful view of the town of Winchcombe in the distance. If you haven't seen last week's video about Winchcombe, please check it out in the description below. As an American, we look at this and say, wow, that would be fun to live in this castle. It's not a castle, it's just a gatehouse to a castle. But yeah, I'd be happy to live there. The gatehouse alone was so gorgeous, it's enough to make an Anglophile like me swoon. When the gatehouse is this lovely, you have high expectations for what is ahead inside the gates. After parking and walking toward the castle, the first thing you see is the Tithe Barn and Koi Pond. This is the ruin of the Tithe Barn, but the flowers in here are so lovely. It's just like a natural, abundant English garden in this little Tithe Barn ruin. So many koi in this lily pond. I wish we had food that we were allowed to feed them. They're definitely not koi. What are they? <laughs> no, they're not koi, they're coming up to Oh. <laughs> These K-O-I are not C-O-Y. It's because they're hungry. I don't want much in life, just a lily pond with magenta water lilies in it in front of my giant castle. These trees are just a blizzard of white blossoms. Now let's begin our tour of the castle by learning about some of its history. The voice you hear next is of a tour guide from Sudley. As you look around us here, um, you can see hills, can't you? Yeah. Now, if you were building a castle, wouldn't you be on top of those hills, not down here? Well, the reason being, Sudley was really never built as a fortification. It was never built as a castle. It was really just built to show off the wealth of a man called Rob Butler in 1442. He'd worked for Henry V, Henry VI. He'd actually eventually become high treasurer of England so he had the most important job and he wanted to show off his wealth. So to show off his wealth, he built a home in some land that he owned in the Cotswolds. Built it to look powerful. And what, when you look at a castle, what do you see that makes you think it's a castle? Crenellation. The crenellations, absolutely. The gappy teeth, the crenellations on the top. Well, Rolf Bottler was a very naughty man. He crenellated his property, yes, but you needed a license to crenellate your property back then. And he never ever got that license. But because Henry VI had a bit of a soft spot for him, he was pardoned for crenellating his property. He was never made to pull it down and he also never ever got the license. But I think it's why we call it Sudley Castle today because it looks like a castle, but it was never really built as a fortification. But my goodness, would you ever try to get through these walls? <laughs> but unfortunately, I have got to say that the parliamentarians in the English Civil War did. We were royalist owned, and I'm afraid they did attack us. Um, and they got in and they stayed for five years. And that's when they received the order to slight the castle. And that means take the roof off it, pull down walls so it couldn't be used as a fortification anymore. And they concentrated 
on the inner courtyard because Rolf had built it in a double courtyard design, very posh in those days. In the outer courtyard being for the servants, the inner courtyard was the posh end where the owners would live. And I'm afraid the parliamentarians concentrated on that bit. And that's why you don't see as much of that inner courtyard as perhaps we would like to see. Um, but you can see how glorious it must have been when you actually see what's left of Richard III's banqueting hall. Those Sudley Castle figures into the dissolution of the monasteries because it was while staying at the castle with Anne Boleyn that Henry VIII set in motion his plan to dissolve the monasteries. And Thomas Cromwell was lodging at the nearby Winchcombe Abbey when Henry summoned him to come to Sudley and start the wheels in motion of dissolving the monasteries based on claims of monastic corruption. Whilst I think these claims did not warrant the destruction of all those gorgeous abbeys and monasteries that now lay in ruin, there was some truth to accusations of fraud. As we learnt in last week's video about nearby Hales Abbey, there were some fake religious relics not far from Sudley. Watch my Hales Abbey video linked below to hear that story. Now for some more stories, scandals, and mysteries linked to Sudley. Sudley has many royal connections involving several British monarchs. But one unbelievable story involves what is known as the Secret Queen of England. She lived at Sudley Castle and her name was Eleanor Talbot Boatler. Here's the story as I understand it. Once upon a time, there was a king of England named Edward IV. In 1464, he married Elizabeth Woodville and she had two sons named Edward and Richard. He also married a beautiful widow named Eleanor Talbot, who lived at Sudley Castle after the death of her husband, Sir Thomas Boatler. Theirs was a secret and short-lived marriage, which nobody really knew about until after King Edward IV died. Trouble was, the bishop who came forward claiming to have officiated at their wedding indicated it happened before the marriage to Elizabeth Woodville. This claim was leveraged by Edward IV's brother, Richard III, who declared the marriage to Elizabeth invalid and then assumed the throne by calling Edward V and Richard not rightful heirs. In fact, he put the two princes in the Tower of London and they were never seen again. Was Richard III a monster? I'm going to leave that to you to debate in the comments. Now for another royal story linked to Sudley. This next story is a most scandalous story of love, betrayal, and manipulation involving two of Henry VIII's wives, Sudley Castle, and some power-hungry men. Jane Seymour was the third wife of Henry, and her brother, Thomas Seymour, had an insatiable quest for power. He attempted to court both of Henry VIII's daughters, Mary, daughter of Catherine of Aragon, and Elizabeth, daughter of Anne Boleyn. When that didn't work, he succeeded in wooing Catherine Parr, Henry's last wife. Catherine fell deeply in love with him and married Thomas Seymour just a few months after King Henry VIII died. Things were looking good for Catherine at that point. She was married to the man she loved, living in beautiful Sudley Castle, and at the age of 36, was finally pregnant with her first child, a baby girl. But meanwhile, ruthless Thomas Seymour was allegedly involved in inappropriate behavior with the teenage princess, Elizabeth, who was living with them at the time. Elizabeth was discreetly sent away. Tragically, Catherine gave birth to baby Mary and died within a week, and Lady Mary also died in infancy. Thomas did not wait around for his wife's funeral, but rather, immediately left for London to renew his courtship of Elizabeth. There was a housekeeper and it's been known that when men started to come up the stairs, they felt themselves being pushed back down. And the story goes that she was quite a hard taskmaster and she didn't like any men coming up to the bedrooms upstairs where the ladies were sleeping. And so that's what they were feeling, being pushed back down again by Mrs. Cox with oh. her duster. The 15th century dungeon tower is one of the oldest surviving parts of the castle. It includes three dungeons within it. 
a human skeleton was discovered in the 19th century, and more recently, a gardener found another skull and bones, as grim reminders of the prisoners once incarcerated there. Speaking of stairs, there's another crazy, soothly stairs story, which involves crazy King George III. He's the monarch known for going mad, losing the American colonies, and being the most awesome character in the musical Hamilton. Yeah, you know the one. Well, apparently, King George III enjoyed taking the waters in Cheltenham and stopping by to visit nearby Soothly. On one visit in 1788, he was inspecting the cannon fire damage at the top of the octagon tower and slipped on a loose step, sending him tumbling headlong down the flight of stairs. Thankfully, the housekeeper threw herself in the trajectory of the falling monarch and cushioned his fall. He then repaid her sacrifice by appointing one of her family members to be a royal guard. The gardens at Sudley are amazing. There are several garden areas on the property and each one is unique and glorious in its own way. I'll share a few glimpses of our wander around the grounds. Another interesting Sudley story is about when Queen Elizabeth I visited the castle in 1592. She and her hundreds of royal attendants were doing a victory lap around the country to celebrate the defeat of the Spanish Armada. She invited herself to stay at Sudley, and the current owner, Lord Chandos, spared no expense for this royal visit, which spanned three days and included bull and bear baiting, I don't even know what that is. You can tell me in the comments. Jousts, plays, dancing, lots of feasting, and even a fireworks display. Unfortunately, the generosity was not repaid by any royal appointments. In fact, Lord Chandos later died in obscurity, nearly bankrupted by the expenses from the monarch's visit. The last time we were here at Sudley Castle was close to 20 years ago and we went running around inside these yew trees, kind of playing hide and seek with our boys who were just wee lads at the time. I have loads more Cotswold adventure videos coming soon, so don't forget to make sure you are subscribed and have clicked the bell so you don't miss any of the fun. Now let's stop by the church, one of my favorite parts of visiting Sudley. There's one more story to share, and this one explains why this church is so very special and not like your typical manor house chapel.
This window shows Seymour, Catherine Parr, and Henry VIII. On the left is Edward the Confessor. Here's a window with Giles, the third Lord Chanos, Queen Elizabeth I, and Edward V. Now for the fascinating story about this tomb of Catherine Parr, the last of Henry VIII's wives. She died here at Sudley in 1548, but the exact location of her body was unknown. Then, in 1782, a couple ladies were sightseeing in the chapel, which was still in a state of ruin after the Civil War. They were curious about an alabaster panel in the church wall and had a farmer dig beneath it until they discovered a leaden coffin with a plaque indicating it was Queen Catherine. They then removed the full lead shield to discover several linen layers of shroud which they curiously opened as well only to discover to their shock that the over 200 year old corpse was still white and moist and looking as if she had just died. The linen shrouds and lead cover had perfectly preserved the body. After a few more decades of unfortunate mishandling, the royal remains were finally interred in this beautiful Victorian tomb designed by Sir George Gilbert Scott. Catherine is the only English queen to be buried on private ground. After touring the church, we left to walk around the remaining gardens and the pheasantry. And now we are in the pheasantry, seeing some rare breeds of pheasants and peacocks. These are really unusual. They're white and then have like a ring of blue around their neck. This pheasant is a beautiful combination of iridescent blue and green and purple. And unfortunately, this female mate is just a drab brown color. This part of the garden is for poisonous plants. The only other place I've seen a poison garden was at Anna Castle Gardens. I spotted this sign in a corner of the garden about hedgehog preservation. I talk a lot more about saving the hedgies in my famous otters, hedgehogs, and puffins video, which I'll link in the description below. I hope you'll check it out if you love any of those critters. As we are about to leave the last of the gardens, we bumped into this fabulous woman named Jackie. She is an Essex girl with the most delightful accent. Please check out my British accent video linked in the description to hear Jackie tell us about Essex girls in her own very Essex accent. No trip to a castle or museum is complete until they make you walk through the gift shop at the end. I loved the funny aristocratic tea sets, but I knew I didn't have the ability to buy and store any of those. So I opted for this souvenir of my visit. It became my 2021 ornament of the year on my Christmas tree. It's actually a depiction of Catherine Howard, who was Henry VIII's fifth wife, not the one buried at Sudley. But you see, I had to get this ornament because she was the only queen wearing a magenta dress. We ended our visit to Sudley Castle by visiting some of the private rooms of the current owner, Lady Ashcroft. And because that is part of their private family home, no photography or videography is allowed. So I can't show you what it looked like inside. You shall have to come visit Sudley Castle yourself. I hope you enjoyed this video tour of Sudley, its gardens, and St. Mary's Church. Please stay tuned for lots more videos of the Cotswolds. And if you've missed any of the previous videos in this series, please click on the playlist here on the end screen or in the description below. Thanks so much for watching and do something good in the world today.